Hello and welcome. The automotive industry as a whole is, well, pretty conservative. Changes when they do happen are generally very incremental, but sometimes a small company comes along and says, hey, we see how you're doing things and, well, we'd like to try something else. Such is the case with this, the Hi-Fi X, an all-new high-end fully electric MPV SUV thing from a Chinese company called Human Horizons. It looks pretty cool, but we're here to find out whether it's all gimmicks or actually genuine innovations. Referring to a car as futuristic has never been truer than when talking about the Hi-Fi X. This thing looks like it's straight out of a sci-fi movie, and not a low-budget one, a high-budget one. Everything from these headlight units here into the connected LED strip, and especially this lower LED matrix kind of headlight with something like 2.1 or 2.6 million separate mirrors that it uses to display various images, ranging from a thumbs up and thumbs down to a smiley face, to a frowny face, and even the image of a walking person to indicate to passerbys, hey, go ahead and walk in front of the car. When you come around to the side of the Hi-Fi X, you can see the rather interesting shape of it. It's not really a SUV, it's not really a wagon, and it's kind of an MPV. I'm not really sure what class you would put it in. Actually, go ahead and tell me in the comments below, what class should this car be in? I'm really not sure. While we're here, we might as well look at these gigantic 22-inch wheels. But of course, the piece de resistance has to be the doors. If I take out my very hard-to-use fob here, unlock, pop it open, you have suicide lower door and then a gull wing type upper door. Lower and upper door is a thing I've never actually had to say out loud before. The look is, as you can see, pretty darn compelling. If I come in here and hold this button, I can close them separately if I like, or if I hold for a while, I can open this up to, instead of 45 degrees, a full 90 degrees, meaning I can stand inside. When we head around to the rear, you can see a continuation of the LED matrix style light from the uh, front end. This thing has some pretty cool lights, things that it can display when you're doing your turn signals or turning the car on and off. It's, it's quite fun to look at, as are these rear tail lights here. And a more practical note, let's have a look at rear space. Take my button, we unlock and then open up. So this is the six seater version. That means it's got three rows. In this case, right now we have the third row laid flat for greater storage. And when you do that, there is a really a decent amount of space. It's not particularly tall due to the sloping roof line, but I would say that there is certainly adequate space for travel for four people. So as we were preparing to film this rear cargo area, and I wanted to show you what it looks like with the third row up, well, putting the third row down is very easy, but one thing I wanna complain about, it's not very easy to get it up. There's no button, it seems, on the side or anything. The only way to really do it is to climb in, uh, grab hold of it, and pull it back. It's a very high-tech car. I would imagine that they'd have a better solution than this. Ugh. There you go. Here on the back end, you can also see the Hi-Fi X logo in a font that I think is actually pretty cool, but perhaps more interestingly is this one over here. What this says in Chinese is Dongfeng Yue Da Qia. Dongfeng Yue Da is a Chinese company here in China. And then there is Qia, which means Kia. That's because this car was produced in a factory in cooperation with Dongfeng Yue Da and Kia. Now, this is no complaint against Hi-Fi. This is a common practice for smaller companies like this to cooperate with larger companies with more manufacturing experience. Take, for example, Neo. Neo's uh, cars are produced in cooperation with a company called Jiang Huai here in China. So it's actually a very common and I think good practice. At this point in the video, you've seen me use this quite a few times. This is actually the car's key or the fob. It's unlike any I've ever used. The different parts of the logo represent different actions that you can do, like open the right side doors, the left side doors, unlock the car, open the uh, rear hatch. It's cool in concept, but in practicality, it's pretty hard to use in my experience. Quite a few times I would hit the button and it didn't really seem to do anything. Maybe I didn't hit it fast enough. Maybe I hit it too slowly. Who knows? 
I'm getting better at it, but it's still not particularly easy to use. See, I wanted the door to open, but it didn't happen. Oh, there it went. Let's check out the interior. Oh, right. One of the things, uh, the first things you notice when you get into the front seat is just how easy it is to do it. This car has better ingress and egress than any car I've probably ever been in. That's especially true of the back seat, but we'll get to that in a moment. First, we need to close this door. There are two ways. There's a button there on the door, but that's very far away. So instead, we go to the center console here, hit that button, and there we go. Let's talk a little bit about the interior designs, shall we? Screens first. We've got to talk screens. 14.6 inch screen here in front of you serving as an instrument cluster as well as an HUD or a HUD up here. The HUD is pretty good. Uh, I wish it was a little bit brighter. I have trouble reading it when I have my glasses on. Here in the center, we have a 14.9 inch touch screen. Center screen here in terms of its operation is, is quite good. It's got very crisp images. Things like the 360 degree camera uh, are, are quite good, but there is some delays. It could be a little bit faster in my opinion. However, overall in its operation, it's quite good. I would say it's not quite as easy to use as a Neos, but definitely very acceptable. Um, in terms of other features here, let's talk a little bit about the space. You have uh, this slides back, you got your two cup holders, you got a wireless charging pad, your split center console here with USB and then USB the type C as well. Not a ton of space in this car. There is also space down here below as well, but due to that giant screen, there is no glove box. Speaking of material qualities, overall, very impressive. This orange stitching, it can be found in this car matching the exterior color, which I like quite a bit. The other thing is there's a lot of black flat plastic, piano black plastic, but it's not regular piano black plastic. There's tons of lights embedded in the plastic to give it a much more interesting look. In fact, there are lights embedded throughout the interior, some ambient lighting that you can see throughout that actually really makes this a much more pleasant place to spend time. This is the 19.9 inch passenger screen. This is easily the biggest screen I've ever seen in front of a passenger. Certainly there are other cars that have one piece screens, but none of them are quite this uh, large, I would say. In terms of things you can do, it's actually relatively limited. Uh, I, I don't believe you can do anything like uh, put navigation on here or anything. You can connect a phone using the uh, Hi-Fi app and maybe there's other options available through that, but it's mostly just uh, media, you know, watching movies and videos, things like that. Uh, are a variety of different apps you can download through the Hi-Fi app market. Uh, I'm sure lots of different games, for example, and things like that, but it is mostly for entertainment. I know you can connect a phone. We haven't quite figured out how to do that. We don't really have time to do that during the uh, short time we have the car, but overall, in terms of its operation, it's fast, actually faster than the center screen here, and very easy to use, quite cool. In addition to using the fob, as I showed you before, the other way to open the doors is here on the side. There are two buttons on this little strip. This is for the front door, and this is for the rear door. If I hit the button here, click that, it will open. One thing I wanna point out is there's a sensor in this door, and we have tested it. If you are standing next to it, or if there's a car parked close to you, it will not open into the car, something that's very important. If I hit it again, it will continue to open for me and then I can get in. And talk a little bit more about these rear doors because they're probably the best part of the whole car. As we mentioned before, there are two parts, an upper gull wing and a lower suicide door. These are operated by a button here on the B pillar. This top button uh, independently operates the upper part. So if I do that, it will close. If I long press on it, it will open a full 90 degrees, more of a show off mode. If I press this bottom button, the whole thing will close for me. In the back seat here, you have a uh, variety of options for your comfort. For example, you have massaging seats, you have uh, air conditioned seats as well as heated seats. I'm definitely gonna choose the air conditioned today. Uh, you can also independently adjust the air conditioning for your climate area, as well as the fan speed, uh, as well as the location. Really everything you can do up front, you can do here. This is also where you raise and lower the windows. There are no physical buttons for raising and lowering the windows. The same is true of the front as well. There's just these uh, little graphics here. So if I hit it once, down, 
up again, closed. The other thing you get is a lot of space and a lot of comfort. I've got an armrest here, as does my other passenger. Uh, tons of space in terms of legroom and footroom. If I hit a button here on the side, I'm sorry, actually right here, goes into a one-touch comfort mode, it's called, where I can lean back, my foot rest comes out. Another thing you may have noticed is this thing will move not just forward and back, but left and right as well. If I hit this button here, I can slide in and out, as can the one to my right, this seat here. That way, if you're with your sweetheart, you can get nice and close. I'm just going to come over to this seat to show you guys just a few more buttons. There's so many of them back here. Here on the side, you can see the adjustments for forward and back independently, as well as your lean and things like your lumbar support. Very rarely have I seen lumbar support, adjustable lumbar support in a rear seat. Nice and comfortable. The other one is here. This is the one touch button for moving the seats forward and down in order to get into the third row. Speaking of which, let's sit back there and see how it is. As we get in the back seat, I first have to hit this button here. This is the easy access button, of course, to move these second row seats forward. And now I can climb in, let me move this. Cool design here, by the way. All right, now we're in. Let's hit that button again. Kind of get an idea what the space is like back here. First thing I'm noticing is headroom is very tight. I'm not a tall guy, but even with this glass part here, there's not a lot of head space, especially forward here. Space in general is pretty tight, unsurprisingly. As comfortable as the first and second rows are, the third row is still pretty, pretty, pretty small. I would say I would reserve this mostly for little kids. All versions of the Hi-Fi X come equipped with front and rear electric motors, producing a combined 440 kilowatts and 820 newton meters of torque. That's 598 horsepower and 607 pound-feet. Those motors are fed by a 97 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack that can be charged from 30 to 80 percent in 45 minutes. Prices for the Hi-Fi X start at $88,000 but rise to over $120,000 for the four-seater Founders Edition, like the one we experienced at the Beijing Auto Show last year. The car we're driving today, a six-seater Founders Edition, rings in at $105,000. The first thing you notice when you're driving the Hi-Fi X is just how huge it is. At 5.2 meters in length, it is about the same length as, uh, well, it's between a Mercedes-Benz E-Class and S-Class, really closer to the S-Class overall. It's also quite wide at 2,062 millimeters. Off the top of my head, it's probably about the same width as something like a Porsche Panamera, so it certainly takes up uh, its part of the lane. This is accentuated by the sloping front end design, which means that you really can't see the front two corners. It has a very uh, good 360 degree camera with the 3D function and all of that, so it's not the end of the world, but it is noticeable. The suspension on the Hi-Fi X, much like the Neo EC6 that we drove earlier this year, is an air suspension, which means that, much like the EC6, it's very, very comfortable. The, it absorbs bumps, you, you barely feel them when you're driving. Uh, it also does the whole raising and lowering when you get it out of the car. I'm sure at higher speeds it lowers for better aerodynamics and things like that. Um, now, I will say that it doesn't have quite the same tightness in feeling as the, uh, as the Neo. Neither of them is a particularly sporty car, being large, heavy SUVs, but I would give the nod to the Neo in terms of overall athleticism. In terms of the steering feel, it's not particularly good. I mean, it's pretty numb, much like you'd expect. In the different driving modes, it has different feel. The Comfort is much lighter, for example, than the Sport. I Personally, my favorite combination is Sport mode combined with the highest regen setting. That's because I like to do one pedal driving. That car, or rather this car, is quite good at that. A lot of cars these days, these electric cars, they even in the highest setting, they will get to a certain speed, say seven or six kilometers per hour, a few miles per hour, and then just kind of cruise like a traditional car, whereas this car will bring itself to fully to a stop. That's what I prefer when it comes to my uh, one pedal driving style. Now, obviously one of the headlines for this car is it's a 600 horsepower dual motor, zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.9 seconds. and. I will say that I believe that number. I find it very, very easy to believe that this car can consistently do that. In 
um, the eco and comfort modes. Acceleration is relatively smooth, but when you put it in sport mode, it will actually, you can hear the tires spinning when you set off. It's actually quite a bit of fun. It's a little bit more dramatic than a lot of other electric cars that I've driven, and I appreciate that. One thing that does make it a little bit more uh, easy to maneuver inside of the city is the fact that it does have rear wheel steering up to 10 degrees. What that means is that whether you're taking a corner or you're doing a U-turn, it can do it much more uh, faster, much more a tight of a turn than you would expect. It actually makes this car with this 5.2 meter length and very long wheelbase maneuver like a much smaller car. It's quite helpful. Finally, I will comment that this does have some uh, autonomous driving features. I believe it's called the Hi-Fi Pilot. Uh, I have experimented with it briefly on the highway, and while I can't give a, a full review or full impression, I will say that it seems to operate much as you would expect with uh, the uh, lane keeping as well as uh, distance. It's um, adaptive cruise control, essentially advanced adaptive cruise control. I would compare it or put it on the same level as the basic system available from Tesla, not quite, as far as I can tell, uh, up to the full FSD package levels, but still very useful. When I first saw the Hi-Fi X of the 2020 Beijing Auto Show, I thought it was just one big gimmick. Those crazy doors and the giant screens, there was no way it was going to work in real life. But having driven it for a few days now, I can tell you that, while not all these innovations are particularly practical, they do work, and they are undeniably cool. All right. That's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram, links in the description. And as always, like, subscribe, and hit the bell.